job. Snow job. All right, not exactly Bond, James Bond, but if you think President Obama reigned in the spies today with little more than a slap on this super secret decoder, decode this. No way. Because it seems the spies who love me and you will still have carte blanche freedom to keep snooping on me and you. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And since President Obama says he had no idea, so much of this metadata mining was maddeningly morphing. What is to stop me from thinking the spies who fooled him will just keep meta ignoring him and never, ever, ever obey him? I know, crazy, but no crazier than the NSA collecting millions of Americans' phone records and data records and email records and bank records. And then for the president to say, stop storing all of those records, well, that's one for the too much to believe record. The bottom line is that the NSA has been shaken but not stirred and clearly not stopped. And an agency whose abuses haven't led to one single terrorist has been far from arrested. Frisked but not fired. So for all of those who think this mindless data mining is ending, me thinks it's providing a few weeks of cover for spies who might temporarily go into hiding but ain't exactly disappearing. Because that is the thing about James Bond. How many times did they try to kill him and couldn't? Because there is money in sequels and lots of money in spies. That's why there was Skyfall. And that's why for spies, the sky will never fall. And that's why Larry Klayman is furious, still very furious, and still suing. He's suing the NSA, and he just won a very big battle when a judge ruled that the spy agency is doing something that risks being unconstitutional. So do, do any of the president's actions today give you comfort, Larry? No, Neil, you're absolutely right in your analysis here. First of all, this never would have come to light, but for Edward Snowden and our court case where the judge entered an injunction, a preliminary injunction, in mid-September, in mid-December. The reality is Obama got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, and his NSA now has to come up with an excuse. And who did he put in charge of making these so-called reforms? James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, who committed perjury to Congress and lied and said they weren't spying on all Americans, and Eric Holder, a fast and furious IRS gate and everything else, who's also lied to Congress. These are the people who are reshaping our intelligence policy and law. And not only that, the president doesn't have the power to do this. It, got, it has to go to Congress. And as you pointed out, the intelligence community is so powerful and so influential. Uh, and in fact, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court is on their side, the secret court that is allowed for these rulings that it's very unlikely anything will happen. We need court supervision in our case to make sure this doesn't happen again. And even then, we need other kinds of safeguards. And, and we don't provide the safeguards, Larry. And if you'll indulge an idiotic embarrassment, I, I'll say it's like a Bugs Bunny moment, where you know the one where he says, I'll dare you to step over that line, throws another line, and then that line. The fact of the matter is, no matter how many lines we draw in the sand, people just kick the sand right back, and the notion is, the president really doesn't mean what he says. Now, you mentioned what's going on in the Justice Department. You mentioned what's going on certainly within the NSA. I look at the IRS and placing a political hack in charge of an investigation that's so far been downgraded to one that won't involve any criminal charges. That, In other words, uh, they doth protest too much about getting to the bottom of stuff because they never do. And that's the problem. We have a government. We have a government with corrupt leaders, unfortunately, who don't tell the truth whether it's any of these so-called phony scandals or Obamacare or whatever. But the reality here is, is that we're not against legitimate spying on terrorists. I mean, that has always been the case. Section 215 and 702 allow for that if there's a reasonable suspicion. Why was it necessary to get the metadata, all of this private information, on over 300 million Americans on their calls? And we know that that will continue to be accessed by the government. Neil. Verizon and the other companies have sweetheart deals with the government. They get paid above market rates for the data. And in exchange, they've been turning it over under the table. To leave it in the hands of the telephone companies does not mean the government's not going to access it. It's going to be the same thing, and, and perhaps even worse than we currently have. That's very well put, Larry. Thank you very, very much, Larry Klayman.